John 14, 1 through 5. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. My Father's house has many rooms, and if it were not so, would I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. These are famous words that I use often at the graveside at a funeral. This passage from 1 Thessalonians, it just kind of reminds us of the great hope of heaven, of where we're going, the promise of a believer, and the power of eternity. It's untold number of families have been comforted by this passage, and, and rightly so. And yet, in, in its original context, this, this actually wasn't a funeral passage. It's a passage spoken in, in the Holy Week, in the final week of Jesus. He is soon to die. But there's, there's a context here that I think is so often missed because this happens at the beginning of John chapter 14, and yet we forget what happens at the end of John chapter 13, and there's really no break between the two. It's at the end of John chapter 13 that Jesus actually predicts the denial of Peter. If you remember the story, <clears throat> Jesus gives a new command. It says, hey, you're supposed to love one another. And then he says, I'm going away. You can't go where it is that I'm going. And Peter says, Lord, I'll go wherever you're going. What's going on? And Jesus says, before the day is done, you will have denied me three times. And the very next words in John's gospel or do not let your hearts be troubled. And what amazes me about this on this Good Friday is how Jesus had this ability to live in the midst of the tension of both very serious conviction of sin and then the great hope of forgiveness and eternity. And if you and I get it wrong as believers, we tend to skew one way or the other. Either we become so overwhelmed with the conviction of sin, we forget about God's grace, and, and literally it demoralizes us and, and makes us become less than what we actually are, less than what God has made us to be, because we are so fixated on what we've done wrong and who we are. But more often in today's culture, we, we've kind of given up on the idea of sin, and all we think about is the grace and, and the forgiveness, which causes us to overestimate our worth and our value, now missing the very uh, act that Jesus has committed on the cross and then the resurrection, the, the power of his grace. And yet when you and I can live in the tension of the both, that, that I am a wretched sinner, I've done horrific things, and much like Peter, I've denied Jesus, I've done all sorts of things. And yet at the same time, there is this great promise of grace, I've received forgiveness, eternity is mine. When we live in the kind of the tension of both of those truths, it changes who we are. It's amazing to me that even as Jesus looked at Peter, knowing what he was about to do, his very next words were, don't let your hearts be troubled. Knowing that Peter would feel the conviction for his sin, Jesus wanted to make sure that Peter understood there was still a future. I think he wants us to know the exact same thing today. Hey, thanks for watching that refuel. We would love you to subscribe below. Hit the subscribe button for this YouTube channel because this Bayside YouTube channel is where we send out all of our video content so you can get all of it. Make sure you subscribe. Thanks for watching.